Hey everybody, Dr. Green here, and today I'm gonna to be giving you a demonstration of what it actually looks like to test your code using a testing framework or library, and then integrate those tests with uh, continuous integration and continuous development, CICD, using gitlab.com. Right, so let's start here. We're gonna start with our basic uh, product or project right here. We have a source. You'll see in my source, I have a main function and I'm just calling a Fibonacci sequence, okay, very simple. I've created an include directory. In there, I have a fib.h file. I've created a namespace, and I've made the one function that namespace holds, fib, available externally. <clears throat> and I also have fib.cpp. Fib.cpp just does an iterative version of the Fibonacci sequence. Very simple, uh, returns a return value. You can look up the Fibonacci sequence online if you need details of how that works or you have forgotten. Um, but the code is good and it's in good shape. So the question now becomes, hey, I've written this code, how do I test it? Uh, so here we're gonna create a new directory called test. You'll see I have a directory called test in my project. Uh, in there, I have two things. One, I have a tests.cpp. I also have a catch.hpp. So you'll see for C++, I am a big fan of the catch2 library. I think it's very straightforward. Uh, there's also some very nice things about this, okay? Uh, so this is catch2. Uh, you'll see the address is right there and it's also in your assignment and some other places on the Canvas shell. We can go into the tutorial here and you can see what catch is. One of the things I really like about catch more than other things is that it has a single header version. Okay, so what is a single header version? That means instead of having CPP files and H files and HPP files, all of the code can be stored in a single header, which means it's much more, uh, much quicker to include and compile with your code. You can install it system wide or build it using CMake, you know, but we're going to avoid that for now. You will see if you click single header, you get this nice long file. All right, you can see that right here. If I go to catch.hpp, You'll see I have an updated version here. It has everything in here. There's lots of pragmas and defines and conditional compilation. And you'll see this file is about 17,000 lines long or 18,000 lines long. So there's a lot going on here. Uh, we're not gonna mess with that. That's our testing library and it's what we're gonna use. Now you'll see if I go back here, I like catch because writing test is really easy. Okay? Uh, you'll see here, they have a nice function. Okay. To keep things simple, we'll put everything in a single file. Okay, So you can see this, how to structure your test files. In one file, you do a define catch config main. If you do not include this in a single file, you will have problems. If you do not include it in your main file for testing, you will have problems. We include catch.hpp. We have the function we're testing. And then I love this simple notation. Test case, give it a name right, with an identifier, and then here are our tests. All I'm doing is I'm saying require that when I call the function factorial with a value of one, it returns a value equal to one. I can change these to greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, anything like that. Now you'll see if I go back to my code, I've actually included this here for you. So I have test case, right, beautiful test case, factorials are computed, here is our factorial function. Okay, see how I mistyped that there? Okay, but now we're back. You'll see defined test cage. It has all this wonderful stuff in here. We have one, two, three, four tests, okay? I'm gonna be very clear with you. A test case should apply to a single function. I am testing one function in here. This is great. Cool, so what do I do now? Well, you'll see, I think I'm actually in this directory. Nope, I'm not, so I'm gonna change to the right project, 3540 make file. Uh, and I'm gonna go into my test directory. There we go, okay? So we have catch.hpp, test.cpp. Basically what you wanna do is test.cpp. Oh, too many errors. There's something not included here. I must have missed something. So let's go ahead and clear this up. Uh, and let's be a little more thoughtful about our build statement. G++ tests.cpp. Um, I do wanna include, right, the current file right, the current directory. Uh, and I also wanna make sure, right, in the current directory, let's see if that works. Oh no, this is not working, what am I doing? Well, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna cheat to show you the answer. I'm gonna go into my own make file. G++ tests, oh, I forgot my Fibonacci file. You all should have reminded me if this wasn't a video. 
Um, so we have some nice things going on here, right? So you remember make files. I actually have three targets in here. I have make all, make tests, and make clean. So instead of going ahead and building this here, which I can do in the, the test directory, I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna go into my build directory, my default directory, and I'm gonna type make all. And you'll see this works wonderfully. Uh, my output is this bin slash fib tests. Well, I made all, I need to make tests. You'll see this takes an extra second because there's some extra things going on here. There we go, and now I can execute it. Dot dot slash bin slash fib tests. All tests pass, seven assertions in two cases. Boy, isn't that wonderful. So what's it look like when this fails? Well, let's make one fail. We'll go ahead, we'll do our make tests. It'll take just a second here. And then we will be able to see, oh, failed, fibtest.exe, okay, factorials are computed. You'll see it actually tells me what's going on here. And it's saying on test.cpp line 12, right, blah, 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 test.cp15 failed with expansion. And it's telling me what's on the left and what's on the right so that I can see what actually broke. Uh, so I can go over here and change this back. I can change the test case. Uh, in the real world, this would indicate that I had messed up something in my factorial function. Okay? So I have two test cases, one passed, one failed. Uh, six assertions, five passed, one failed. Okay? And you'll see by repairing that, I can go back and I can make my tests again. It will go ahead and build everything. And then I can go ahead and run them and we're back to all tests having passed. Hey, now note, I do have a second test gauge here for my own Fibonacci sequence. Fib of Fib of one equals one, right? And you'll see this, that's the, you know, what it should be returning, one, two, three, all these kind of values. It's returning the right value, so it is passing right now. If you look at the documentation, you can write all kinds of things here, uh, and it explains to you all these wonderful things. Hey, I strongly suggest that you read through this very carefully. Hey, we can do other things too, like put sections in, and I'll show you this in a little bit. Um, what a section is, is a very special part that lets us set up and tear down things, okay? Uh, if you read in your book, there's always a setup and a tear down. So you'll see I created, they create a vector in this example. Test case vectors can be sized and resized. Require, right, test that the size is five, test the capacity is five. Well, we go in here and then we say testing resizing. Okay, so this is great. So I'm testing that vectors can be sized and resized. And here I will resize my vector to 10, then make sure that the size is 10 and the capacity is at least 10. Once I exit this section, everything is reset to this initial condition. And then I go back in here and it re-resizes, then to here, and then it reserves, and then to here, and then right, so it adjusts every time. This is really, really nice. Okay, this gives us a way to set up and tear down very quickly and very easily without any problems. Okay, um, You can see this, right? You can preserve capacity, all these things. They can be nested. They can be an arbitrary depth. depth. Uh, they can be really, really well done. Okay, So this is really, really good. Okay, So read through this carefully. Make sure you do a good job. Um, the other thing I like about Catch is that you can do BDD, behavior driven right? testing. Uh, this is a really nice thing where we can use this behavior-driven development with our given when then. Okay, You'll remember this from our user stories when we said, what do acceptance tests look like? This is called behavior-driven development, right? So given that you have a vector with some items, when the size is increased, then the size and the capacity should change. We can literally write these tests exactly how we would write our acceptance tests. Now we're really testing our code in a way that corresponds to the way we've developed user stories and issues. Okay, so this is a really, really nice thing. Uh, you can take a look here. There are much more in-depth things that we can do in terms of testing. I'm not gonna cover those in this class. We are gonna do basic testing in here. If you wanna learn more about testing, I suggest you take our uh, graduate level course in testing and quality assurance, which I believe is CS5550. Okay. So this is the basics of testing. Now I'm going to move on to another project here. Okay. So this is my test project. I want to show you how to integrate this with continuous integration. If you remember, continuous integration uh, automates this whole process for us. 
All right, so I'm gonna do this whole thing with Docker based on something I've shown you all before. Uh, so you'll see I have a basic Docker file. It uses Alpine Linux. Uh, I have some things here, updating the repositories, making sure G++ and Bash are installed. I make my directories, I have my code, I'm mounting it. Um, I've used this in a previous example, so you should be somewhat familiar with this. Uh, I also have my code in this directory, right? And you'll see everything is pretty much the same. I have my tests. Uh, in my tests, what I have in here is I actually put the behavior-driven tests in here, okay, so that you can see these working and see what that looks like. Uh, one thing that is different is my make file. I've included in a much more advanced make file for you all to evaluate. You'll see on the first line, I set my compiler. Very easy, you know what this does. The new notation that you're seeing is in the middle here, so I'll come back to that. Down at the bottom, I have my targets, all tests in clean, and you will see I've used variable expansions to do everything there. So this is a very generic make file. I've set my C flags at standard C++14. Uh, you may want to upgrade this to 17 in your assignment. Uh, but then what I've done is I've actually defined two sets of variables. You'll see these variables are identical. Source, include target, source, include target. When I do all, my source variable will contain dot dot slash source, main dot cpp, and dot dot slash include fib dot cpp. If I call the tests target, if I type make tests, my include variable or my source variable will now be defined by the line prefixed with, prefixed with tests. Okay? This is a nice little trick. We have in make files a nice little feature where we can define variables according to the target that is being called. So if I called tests, these are the variables I will use. If I say make all, these are the variables I will use. Okay? So this is a really nice thing. Uh, it gives me some nice advanced things and makes things work well gives me a lot of flexibility and freedom. Okay. Now, what we're gonna do for our continuous integration is we're gonna be using GitLab CI CD, continuous integration, continuous delivery, and continuous deployment. This video I strongly suggest you watch is a great overview of this whole process, and I suggest you read this introduction to CI CD with GitLab. Fundamentally, what we're going to do is create a gitlab-ci.yaml, YML, YAML file, and the, the repository's root, that will create pipelines which runs, run jobs for us. I expect that you will read through this documentation, evaluate it as a team, and understand what's going on. While I give you an example here. So you'll see in my gitlab-ci.yaml, um, I'm telling it what Docker image I wanna use. I wanna use this one, a yokus slash alpine dash bash. Before my script runs, I'm asking it to run apk update and apk add make and g++. That gives me make files in the g++ compiler. I will have two stages. I will have a build stage and I will have a test stage. In my build stage, right, and I can define this as the build stage, change to the default directory, make a bin directory, and then type make all. For the testing, I will have my test stage Right? It's named as test and there are various names for these stages. My script is change to the default directory, make a directory dot dot slash bin, run make tests, and then run my actual tests. So you may be asking how does this actually work? Well, this is a repo, um, you'll see. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna do some commits here. I'm gonna modify it for fall 2020, okay? And then I am pushing to a repository that's defined by my remote that I have already named fall 2020. You'll see that this will push this up here and I'm gonna go, this is our example, fall 2020. Okay, so you'll see uh, this is available in the demonstration subdirectory of our uh, repositories. And I have all this here, but what I also have is this CICD, okay? This is awesome. You'll see I had one earlier that failed. Uh, this is what's running right now and I can actually click in here and take a look. So this is the commit, this is the status, it tells me it's running, okay? Running, it has a build phase and a test phase. If I click on the build phase, it goes in here and you can see what it actually did. Running with GitLab Runner, it pulled this, it pulled the Docker image, initialized my Git repository, checked it out, executed the script, it updated, it installed, it made all, it ran this command, and I got a job succeeded. Excellent, that's exactly what I wanted to happen. Uh, now you'll see we have the testing that's going on right now where it's doing the same thing. It's pulled this, it has the Docker image, all these things. 
It's coming in, hey, my job has succeeded. It is now passed. This is excellent, okay? Uh, whatever email address you have attached to your repository, you will start getting emails that tell you that these jobs are successful or not. You can look in here, right? You can use directed ASIC like graphs, right? To do some things in terms of job dependency. You can also look at jobs as they go through straightforward, okay? Um, so this is really nice. Okay? And you can do this just by going through here. You can see all the previous jobs that have passed and failed. You can also see all your active pipelines and whether they have failed or whether they have passed and what commit they're related to. This is great for record keeping. Just to show you what happens when you fail something, I'm gonna go into my test directory, I'm gonna to go to my test, and I'm just gonna change this to seven. That obviously won't work because my size here is five. I will go ahead and I'm gonna do the same thing, 20 to fail, and I'm gonna push to the same repository. Uh, now you'll see here, if I go into CICD, it'll show me my pipelines, and this is running. I can go in here, I can watch these in real time, I can see what happens. You'll see this will take a moment. Uh, it will work through the build process, just like we saw before. You can see it's resolving secrets, that's a security issue, preparing the Docker machine executor. And there we go, it executed everything, the build succeeded, fantastic. We can go back, we can take a look at the testing process, which should have been started by now. And you'll see executor with image, we're back right where we started. So in just a second here, this build is going to complete and then it's going to run the tests. There we go, and you'll see this is great, error job failed with exit code one. Okay, uh, so we now have failed tests and if we go back to CICD, you will see I have this failed right here and I can dig into this and see what failed and how it failed, right? Because it's telling me this failed and it'll come in and show me exactly what happens. I can read my output. So you may be saying, well, why does this matter? When I do this automated testing, I will always have my repository set up to run and verify my tests all the time. When multiple developers are working together, this verifies that all our codes continues to work in the same way. It gives us regression testing or the testing of the previous code uh, over and over again. It maintains everything. Now we can take this a step further. We're not gonna do this because we're building desktop and command line applications in this class. Uh, but there are examples out there, which I've done in the past, where you use a Laravel project or a Ruby project or a PHP project, and you can actually deploy these in real time. Uh, I can show you one example of this, uh, just as an example. I have my own website at rgreen13.gitlab.io. Uh, you will see that I also have a gitlab-ci.yaml. Uh, I use a platform called Jekyll with Ruby to build my website. I also have a test and a pages stage. Uh, and you'll see that the deploy stage, right? I've named pages, it deploys, it runs the script bundle exec jacko build minus d public. It sets some parameters and it builds from master. Well, you will see if I look at my own CI CD, there is a long list of this because every time I update my website, right? And I just recently had a journal publication, I added some abstracts, some all changes. Every time I make a change, it automatically builds my website and pushes it out to rgreen13.gitlab.io. Okay? So this is part of what we wanna do. We automate this process and it takes away all the hassle. Now I will tell you like any other automation process, this can take some upfront commitment time. Sometimes it feels like you're wasting time. You are not. As a software engineer, as a computer scientist, you should be willing to script and automate away as many of the daily things you do in your life as possible to free you up to actually focus on the things that matter to you. So that's your demonstration of doing basic testing as well as CI and CD. Uh, I hope it helps and uh, enjoy your coding.